is our monster moment. Mm. Pretty good, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's not that strange because I see it happening. What's strange is seeing people's reactions to it when they, when they see me for the first time. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> That's the reaction we want, right? It's pretty rough, right? Oh, oh. I know. It seems like you had a rough night. Yes, it's, in that, it's a great Halloween costume. In rough night. Right? <laughs> Wait till they do the teeth. No one would talk to me. <laughs> that was the weird thing. Is I, you know, I don't. I really don't look very nice, and I have like my skin sort of looks like it's decaying, and I'm a very disturbed-looking lady. It didn't seem to scare Jodell at all. We've already put her in an oven. She's not scared of anything. <laughs> <laughs> they do uh, prosthetics and then apply things to your face. So um, my entire face, except for sort of a like a blaze down the middle, is all burned. Different nights I had a prosthetic sleeve of um, burns up my arm and then prosthetics under my dress that, like, where you see a slash. It's uh, about a five hour makeup. Um, we've uh, uh, just pre constructed these uh, the pieces for her face. There's five in total. Uh, they're gelatin. It's kind of nice you get the uh, actual translucence and the color, you know, in layers intrinsic in the piece. So it really looks like skin, burnt up, uh, kind of cheese toasty. Uh, we've got a large pile of uh, medical reference books, that sort of thing, so I've done a lot of burns over the years, made it down to the burn ward. It's so um, painful to look at, it's so disturbing, and you know, you're putting it on and it's all a lot of laughs, but then you look in the mirror and you go, oh my god, this is so, it's so painful looking, and that, that freaked people out, looking at me with the burns on. Initially, I think the, the way it was written was that Margaret, Margaret's fear was hell. And so being on fire, she was like going to be eternally on fire in hell because that was her greatest fear. They're religious and um, she feared damnation. But then they changed it slightly so now that the, she's in the oven. So she, her fear is dying the way she tried to kill her child. I don't think I've gone mad. I just think, I think I'm on fire. So once and once, if you if you knew what it was like to feel like you're on fire all the time, of course you'd look like you're mad. But <laughs> it's not fun. <laughs> well, some of the stuff we had to do is really dark. It's really disturbing. Um, fortunately, we didn't have to spend a lot of time there. We rehearsed for a few hours on my first day, and then the second day we did um, stills, and then my third day we were shooting. And Christian at rehearsal, he said um, about the fire scene, oh yeah, you're really, you're really being set on fire. And I was like, um, what? <laughs> and he said, oh yeah, yeah, they have, this, they have this gel and they put it on your arms and then they set you on fire. And, and um, you know, they did a test for us the other day and it's just really going to be you. I sent an email to my family that morning. I said, <laughs> I said um, just asking for some prayers today because I could end up horribly disfigured doing this stunt. So I just want you all to just, just put it out there. Just let's hope this goes well. It was a little nuts. It was cool. But when it was over, I was happy. Fun to go and see a film that manages to make you uncomfortable. When she first takes me in, I'm, of course, basically just completely sweet. <laughs> I really did want to make a horror movie because I wanted to get out of this corner of getting all the horror scripts, but this one was just so much fun that I had to do it. One thing happens and she's not too sure, and then another thing happens and she's pretty sure. This is like a cross with the Bad Seed, The Exorcist, classics of that kind. I think the thing that we, that we always liked about Case 39 was the opportunity to do a horror movie that doesn't start out like a horror movie. You actually think you're in a thriller. And then some more things happen and she is pretty freaked out by me. <laughs> I 
My manager told me about it, and he sent it to me in England while I was filming Beatrix Potter. And uh, I didn't have time to read it right away as soon as it got there because, you know, it was in the middle of the filming day. And uh, so I gave it to my assistant, Sarah, and I uh, said, have, have a look at this. I hear that it's supposed to be pretty good. And I came back from doing this shot, and she was curled up in a little ball on the chair with the script in her lap. And I thought, that was my first good sign, probably, that I needed to take that thing home and read it. The script is actually one of the scariest scripts I've ever read, and that's actually one of the reasons why we got involved. If I like horror movies, I like them when they are exaggerations of real fears that we, that we might have. So this movie is, to me, what's interesting about it is the parts that reflect reality. Something really bizarre and inexplicable is happening, even as it's occurring. Lo the logical mind is trying to justify it or explain it in some way. And um, we all relate to that. So because of that, we all get drawn into stories like this when they're cleverly told. I think everybody loves working with Renee, so nobody ever has any problems, you know, working with her, and that makes for good chemistry with all of her co-stars. What's so great about Renee is she makes you believe that a character, as they would in real life, is processing this information. What Renee has to do is act the process of going from a character who lives in a real world and has to understand, like we all would, how a supernatural thing has entered into this environment. It's a wonderful line to walk as an actress to go back and forth between the moments where she's potentially losing her mind and is desperately trying to justify um, the unusual occurrences uh, and then, you know, starting to slowly believe that, that maybe um, what's happening isn't based in reality. I know a lot of actresses and actors who would not go that far. Like for two full days, barefoot in the rain at night, you know, and then I need another take. I know some who would come and say, okay, you've got one more, and then I'm in my trailer, you know, and she never did that. The scariest thing is seeing a little, you know, I guess seeing a little 11 year old kid become this monster, be this monster. Jodel Furland, who plays Lily, is a terrific young actress. I think she's actually the youngest performer ever to win any major award. I think she won an Emmy when she was four years old. So she's been doing this quite some time and she's only, I think she just turned 12 as well. I told my friends that yes, I found my souvenir from Vancouver. Her name is Jodel and I'm taking her back to America to live with me. I like being scary girls. I don't know why they always bring me in for scary things. I think I've only gone for like two comedy auditions. <laughs> it's always for the scary roles. And I guess it's because when it's like a cute little girl, they think, oh, what a cute little girl. And then, and then suddenly they, they see it that I'm like really creepy. And then it's even more scary because it's like cute and scary. <laughs> it's like, ah. <laughs> I'd imagine it would be really difficult to cast children in these roles where you're going to ask so much of them that's not necessarily comfortable or, I mean, you know, ask them to go to places that are very emotionally mature. Um, and they did. That was really hardcore. I was just worried about, you know, Jodell, because she had to get in there, and they did have special effects, flames and smoke and things like that all around her, and I had to jerk her out of it. And then she'll laugh about how funny it is the minute that it's over. Okay, It was fun. The bottom of the oven was rubber. It was great. <laughs> I liked it. Then they got to tape me inside there, you know, they had a little smoke thing to make it go poof, 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 to make it look like it was on. It was really funny, actually. These kind of films depend on the director you get, and he's so in control of his material. It's a pleasure, you know, and so it's, he knows what he's doing, so he's just, it's like having a great coach. You go in there and what do you want me to do? Bang, bang, thank you. Before Christian comes to work, the film is made. He sees it from beginning to end in his mind. He knows what it needs to be, and particularly important in this, in this genre. Very good. 
What stands out about Christian Style is that he tries to get a number of setups per day that is completely unheard of in feature filmmaking. Storyboards like I've never seen. Never. They, there's volumes of them and they stack as high as this chair and there's probably four of them. Christian will show up with storyboards and want 52 setups a day. You know, I don't know what the average is on a general movie, but eight is often good, 12 is fantastic, 15 would be brilliant. Christian comes in with the idea of doing 52. Every shot, every angle, every head movement, every turn, every line has been drawn out in, you know, storyboard form. Well, I storyboard everything, even the most boring scenes, because, um, you know, I try to make them not boring. <laughs> we don't shoot per scene, we shoot by numbers. You know, which shot number is it? Which setup is it now? Oh, it's number 14. Oh, okay, everyone, we moved on to 14. What's 14? You go over and you look at the storyboard board, which is the size of this wall per day. This is not storyboards. This is a, a shot list based on the storyboard, which just says what we're doing when, in what order, and what direction. So they can prep and be a lot faster than if I block it on the day and decide here after 10 rehearsals where to put the camera. So that's why we are fast. The genre is that psychological horror story. And you, you need somebody who knows how to do that kind of thing. And Mr. Albert does, without a doubt. Just, I want to go as far as possible without losing the audience. Because, you know, there's a certain point where, where they hate you <laughs> for doing that. It's great storytelling. And it's one of my favorite uses of this medium in terms of entertainment. Um, and when it's good, it's really good. If you tell me what scares you. I accidentally put my hand through a hornet's nest. I was stung over a hundred times. Every actor who read for the part was loving the hornet scene. They all wanted to die in a horrible, horrible way. That scene, when I first read the script, was the scene which really made me want to do the movie. The Hornet scene, by far, was the most challenging thing, just because uh, it's I wasn't quite sure how it was going to be, and I knew that I'd have to really throw myself into it, and you never know what's going to happen. The Offen scene and the Hornet scenes are exactly as I read them before, like Ray wrote them, and he had it all figured out very detailed, like there's one Hornet doing this, and then there's three Hornets doing that, and then he looks like this, and he can't he believe it, he shakes his head, he, he turns around, he does, and this was very detailed, it was like three pages. And since everybody who read that had his, had his fantasy going, I really wanted to meet that fantasy and don't disappoint. So I cleared two entire days on the schedule for just this scene and uh, just a lot of shots. I don't know, almost 60 shots in that scene. That was definitely by far the most challenging thing uh, for me in this movie was that scene, filming that scene and making it real and really believing that this is happening. Because you can't really, fa I mean, you could fake it, but, I mean, I did fake it. I wasn't killed by hornets. But, uh, but to believe as much as I can, to get, you know, the given circumstances. That scene specifically, the uh, hornet scene, there's so many little pauses in the rhythm of the way it was written. It's not just this gory, uh, horrific, like, saw or, or, you know, that, those kind of movies. It, it really is uh, suspense. There's tons of suspense. We, we, we spent two days shooting that scene, the Hornet scene, and it was uh, pretty incredible. There's going to be a lot of CGI stuff, so there were, there were only dead Hornets that were in a freezer, and they really smelled in the back of my shirt. But they were... Uh, that was intense. I mean, it was, it was so fun, because we got to go into this bathroom for two days, and I got to just destroy it, basically. And... Uh, and he let me destroy it, and he had all these cool things that Doug did. And basically, you get to play a guy who loses his mind. And that's fun. No! No! Right now, we're burning the house, which is uh, Renee's character's decision that the only way to deal with it is to burn everything down. My name's Bob Coleman, I'm the Special Effects Coordinator for Case 39. 
Well, the house about three to four weeks ago was nothing, it was an empty lot. So all they did was lay some scaffolding down to lay a base and then just built uh, the, the, ex the, the exterior of the house on it, which is basically uh, just uh, three walls and a roof. Um, actually, a lady was walking past this afternoon and she said, is that a real house? I said, no, it's kind of a facade. She said, well, I'd buy it. I didn't have the facade in the budget, so, and I, I fought for a long time to build this house, so I'm now happy that I have it. I was shooting here for three days. Even if it's a house that you can destroy because it's old, you don't know what kind of foams and chemicals and stuff is in there, so it's, you just don't have it under control, and this is all controlled, and we can turn the fire off and back up and turn it on again, so I'm very happy that we have that. It was a long battle. The fire starts basically outside at the back. We have the biggest propane tank you ever want to see. I mean, it's massive. You could actually burn down the whole street with it, but it's uh, it's more convenient for me to do it that way. Okay, so that one is the furthest window by that house. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Tell me when you're there with your torch. I'll make you acknowledgement. Propane flames are very hot for a start off, so there's gonna, her, her exposure to the flames will be very limited. We're going to do a shot where um, the camera is outside at the bottom of the path, so the net curtains are drawn, and there's flames in the background here. And we have the shadow of a stunt lady walking across here, then that's Rene taking off with the fish. She goes around the corner in here, and Rene stood by the door. And as the stunt lady leaves, Rene emerges, it's kind of a Texas switch. And then as she leaves and closes the door, the back of the door's got legs in on it, we bring the flames up uh, in the other room. So, flame up. Flame up. I get the flame up as soon as the flame up, she shouts, say, action. Mm -hmm. And the stunt girl will walk across the window and it all happens. Continuing question. If the windows don't actually fall out when we blow them, I'll take the windows out. Here we go. D Mark. Yeah. Action, Marley. 